Hi, everybody. Now I'd like to do, on the second day of school, some definitions and some undefined terms from our geometry class. And there are three terms that have no definition. You can print this page, or you just could put, write these things out on a piece of paper and keep it in a pocket in your folder. But these are terms that we'll be using throughout the year. They're important to us. Let's make a good job and see about understanding them right away. So it begins with, Name three undefined terms, is that true? And there are three undefined terms. It seems like everything ought to have a definition. And in every math class that I know about, most everything does have a definition. But in a geometry class, there are three terms that are not defined at all. One of them is point. We don't have a definition for a point. I can name it with a single letter. That would be perfect, and we know that that's true. And it, what it really denotes is a location. I might say the point in the corner, or the point on the corner of the blackboard, or the point where these two lines cross each other. But a point is just a location, and it doesn't have a definition. You don't have a big point or a small point. Euclid said, a point is that which has no part. And we study Euclidean geometry. Let me still write that down. Euclid, the father of, of high school geometry, really the father of geometry, Euclid, written like that, but what we study is Euclidean geometry. And from Euclid, we agree that the, the, a point has no definition, but we could describe it, we can name it, and whenever we name a point, we'll do it with a capital letter. What's a, another thing, another term that we, we should have that is undefined is a line. We know a lot about lines, we've seen it before, we graph them in our, in our algebra classes, but a line through, for any two points, there's always a line. I know that that is true. And here's a pretty good picture of a line, and we would know how to name that line. I name a line from any two points of a line. But I don't have a definition for this, for this line. How, how thick would a line have to be? A line is as thick as that point, and a point has no size at all. So it doesn't have any thickness at all. Then we're going to draw it so you can see it. How long would it be? It's infinitely long. We can describe it, but we will not define it. And there's a third term from a geometry class that we should define as well, and that is a plane. Not like plane like an air, not like plane like ordinary, but plane like this. A plane. And a plane is an infinite flat surface. Now, in Euclidean geometry, this geometry from 2,000 years ago, planes are infinitely long, wide, flat surfaces with no corners. People talk today about space being curved. We're not going to talk about that at all. Our planes will be flat and, and forever. Flat, long surfaces. Flat, long, wide, no corners. Just big, flat surfaces going through space. So there are three undefined terms in a geometry class there. Point, line, and plane. We should know a lot about them. We should be able to describe them. We should be able to name them. But we won't have a definition for them. But there are some terms that we will have some definitions for. Let's talk about those now. What's the first thing we ought to talk about? Line segments. A line segment is a subset of a line, a part of a line, with two distinct endpoints. Easy enough to get a picture of that. If I had this line ABC, this line AC, because I name a line with just two points, if I wanted to say the one that starts here and stops there, I would just call that segment BC. So the definition of a segment is a subset of a line with two distinct, distinct meaning different, a subset of a line with two distinct endpoints. Is the next one ray? It is. And what do we know about a ray? I think we know a lot about that. Let me draw a picture of it though, just because I love to draw pictures. Here's a line. I'll put three points on that line. A and B and C. And a ray is a subset of a line, again, a part of a line. And it starts at a single point, that we could call that the end point, and it goes forever in one direction or the other. And this one, if I could, well, how would I name that ray? It starts at B, it goes through A, and it keeps on going. Whenever you name a ray, you start at this end point, and you show the direction in which it travels. Ray BA. Even though this one goes to the left, I'll show that going to the right. So that's how we ought to name a ray. A ray, and it has a good definition. It's a part of a line, a subset of a line with one distinct end, with one endpoint, infinite in the other direction. What's next? We have <laughs> angle. An angle. Let's draw a picture of an angle, then we can describe it and probably come up with a pretty good definition. Angle looks like this, or lots of different looking angles, but here's a pretty good looking angle. 
and we usually name an angle with three points. This would be angle A, B, C. And it is the union of two rays that have a common endpoint. They have to be non-collinear rays. They have to go not along the same flat surface, not along the same line. Here I have the union of two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint, and there I have an angle. How would I name that angle? I could call it angle ABC, just like that, or I could call it angle CBA. I know whatever I name an angle, the vertex would be the center letter. And what more do we have, brother? Collinear points. Collinear points. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. If points lie on the same line, they must be collinear. One could even say points are collinear if and only if they lie on the same line. Next we have coplanar points. Now if collinear points lie on the same line, what about coplanar points? Pretty easy deduction there, huh? Um, it, it's clear to me that coplanar points must lie on the same plane. Points are coplanar if and only if they lie on the same plane. Lots of points lie on this plane over here. I got two, lots of those. Let's go further. What more can we talk about? All right, let's look at that figure and let's talk look at about this figure. Right, this figure is to represent a plane in a big flat surface plane in. Now this one has corners, but just so I can demonstrate the direction for this plane, planes don't really have corners. They're infinite in these directions. And sitting on this plane in, we have this pyramid with a quadrilateral base, base A, B, C, D, and vertex F. What should we talk about from this pyramid? Let's see, how many distinct planes can be named in the figure? Uh, how many different planes can we name in the figure? There's obviously plane N that is the base plane. How should we name a plane? I should have talked about this before. We name a plane with three non-collinear points. You can name it with a capital letter like this, but I could have also called that plane N is also plane ABC or plane ADC. These I guess I'll say that they're equal. It could call this plane ABC, like that. And this would indicate to me that this is a plane, and it's the plane that holds A and B and C. And the only plane that holds A and B and C is the plane that we're also calling plane N. That, that's a way we can name that, but there are other planes in here, or there. How about, say, this plane, this flat surface over here. Now, as we know that the plane goes for, is infinite in all directions, but I'm just showing part of that plane, and I want to name that plane with three non-collinear points. I could call that plane C, C, B, F. That would be plane C, B, F. I think it would have been good to call it plane C, B, E as well. As long as we have three non-collinear points that lie on that plane, it's a perfectly fine way to name that, line, that plane. Are there more? And I bet you see more. Let's look some more. How about this, this back plane? You might not see that very well, but the back plane there that holds F and D and C, I could call that plane, I'd like to make a little plane marker there, FDC. Order's not important there. You could have called it CDF, but it's the plane that holds these three non-collinear points, and that's how we'll always name a plane from three non-collinear points. Do you see more of them? I do, I see two more. This pyramid has four lateral surfaces. Another plane that we could name has point A, D, and F. I haven't named that one for it yet. Plane A, D, F. Is there another? I think I meant to name the back plane here, D, C, F, yeah. So what about the front plane here, right in front? A, B, F. There's a fourth plane that is part of that pyramid. <laughs> Plane A, B, F. I don't think there are more planes than that. I have another one. Which one was that? I got plane N. What about? And I got the four planes along the pyramid. What more? Do you see another? Oh, you did talk about the A, B, C. Okay, I was seeing the, what about the bottom of the pyramid? Yeah, the bottom of the pyramid, A, B, C. I did that one, but I could have called it plane N as well. So it's the bottom plane there. Then the four planes of the lateral surfaces of the pyramid here, and there, and there, and there. And I think that would be all the planes that we could talk about here. So there are five of them, huh? Is there more to talk about? Yeah, what is the union of ray EB? Oh, uh, let me write this down. Ray EB, union 
and Ray E D. E D. I don't know. Gotta look at Ray E B. Now I don't see Ray E B, but I know it exists. If those two points exist, I can show Ray E B. I'll do it. Ooh, I think that that would really go through the plane and come out the other side, wouldn't it? Ray E B. And we're going to join that together because it's a union with Ray E D. Is that right? E D. That's going this yep. way, huh? So what do you think about those two rays if we join them together? I know our, the union of two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint is an angle. And I'm going to name the angle that has ray EB in it and ED in it. I ought to call that angle BED. But you could have called it DEB. That would have been just as good. Angle BED. Would have been fine to call it DEB. That's the union of those two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint. Is there more? Yeah. Name three collinear points that exist on the figure. Collinear points must lie on the same line. The only three non the only three collinear points I see are along this line. So I would have to say they are. Give me a place to write that. F, E, and C are three collinear points. Get that right. F, E. And C. There I have three collinear points that exist in this figure. They are a long line FC. If you were to introduce a point G such that points D, A, and G were collinear, where D, must a. you put point G? G it's has to be collinear with D and A. With D and A? Then it's got to be a long line DA. It would have to be in plane M. It would have to be on line AD. Wouldn't really have to be between them, but it would just have to be along the line. Let me extend this thing. It should lie in the plane, because A is in the plane and D is in the plane, therefore line AD is in the plane. And you say, I'm supposed to name a point. What's the name of this point? G. G. Yeah. I could put it anywhere along there. I gotta, this A was that point right there. I'm going to call that place right G. There's my point G. And it is along that line that is at the edge of the base of the, plane, of the, of the pyramid. There's point G, and it's on the same line as D and A. Therefore, those three points, D, A, and G, are collinear. Are points D, E, and B collinear? D, E, and B? No. D, E, and B were on these two non-collinear rays that made an angle. So D, E, and B are non-collinear. They don't lie on the same line. Well, are they coplanar, D, E, and B? I would tell you that any three non-collinear points are always coplanar. I don't see the plane that holds them, but I could sketch it if I wanted to. Is this the last question? I won't nope. try to sketch it because I'll screw up my figure, I think. But if point D, E, and B would all lie in plane D, B, E, or D, E, B, any three non-collinear points are always coplanar. Last question. Are points A, B, C, and E coplanar? A, B, C, and E. Let me think about this. I know that A, B, and C are certainly coplanar. They all exist in plane N. They exist in plane A, B, C. I have to ask myself, does point E exist in that same plane? And the answer is no, it's not. This point E is not in the same plane as A, B, and C. As we think more about this, are points E, B, and C coplanar? I would say, yes, they are. E, B, and C are coplanar. But A is not in that plane. Therefore, I, I, I deduce that those four points are non-coplanar. There's a little look at points, lines, and planes, a few defined terms, and a look at some three-dimensional figure thoughts. What I would like for you to do with this is write it out, make it, make it something that you know well, and put it in the pocket in your folder. We'll get a look at your folder soon and, and, and see how things are going. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.